Hello everyone, on behalf of the Mindalia TV team, welcome to Mindalia live streaming. Today we have the company of Luisa Barajas. Luisa is a yoga instructor, aromatherapy instructor, graphic designer, and she is an essential oils expert. Before starting our conversation with Luisa, we just want to remind you that Mindalia is an international nonprofit organization and that you can collaborate with us just by liking this video, subscribing to our channel, leaving us a positive comment, or sharing this information with someone that you know that may like what we're gonna be talking here today. Having said that, I have the pleasure of introducing Luisa. Luisa, welcome to Mindalia. Thank you for accepting our invitation. How are you? Good, thank you, Mirna. Um, thank you and Mindalia for the invitation. I'm so happy to be here. I'm so grateful. I have been uh, watching Mindalia for almost two years, and it was a dream to one day uh, be able to share with your community, and I'm so grateful and happy to be here today. And we are grateful and happy that you accepted our invitation. Let's go ahead and say really quick that we are today doing this in English, but our main channel is in Spanish. We do this. We've been doing this for seven years and it's a great uh, journey. And now from probably a couple of years, we started broadcasting in English and it's been super, super, super fun. We just wanted to share the same type of content we share in Spanish to do it in English. So thank you for accepting our invitation, Luisa. You <laughs> no, are you. A, a yoga teacher, a yoga instructor. Is it, How is it said? Is it said teacher or instructor? What's the proper way? I'll say it instructor. Um, I'll consider more an instructor than a teacher, but you can say it both ways. <laughs> Okay. And you have been also an aromatherapist, uh, facilitator or instructor or uh, however it is said. Let, let's not put the rules here on how it's called. <laughs> <laughs> what brought you to that point? Because you are, your profession is a graphic designer. That's exactly what you do. But all of a sudden your, your life started like shifting towards another path. Is this something you've always been interested in or something in particular made the turn towards this way? Yeah, uh, my profession is a graphic designer. I love art. I love uh, colors and all the visuals. But I think as a human, as a person, we, in, I started in my 20s. So in our 20s, I think we go through a lot of changes. The, uh, we start looking for something to anchor ourselves or to um, go through all the changes that we go through when we're young. And I found yoga, a path that it changed my life. And I started uh, practicing and I love the teachings. I love what the philosophy and I love mostly what it makes me feel and how my mind change and how I discover what my body can do. So that that's when I started that path. And the uh, aromatherapy come years later. After practicing, I start uh, teaching yoga. I uh, open a little yoga studio, and I just wanted to offer something for my students to come and release the tension immediately or feel relaxed as soon as they walk in. So I start asking what to use that is not toxic or not using chemicals, and they recommend me to use um, aromatherapy. So I bought my oils and I started diffusing them in the class uh, but I thought maybe like a lot of people think that aromatherapy is just lotions or candles or really nice scents but then I discovered that it was far more than that that aromatherapy is an holistic alternative to natural medicine that uses uh, plant extracts and plants have always played a vital role in humans it have always been our food and our medicine so then when I discovered that the part that will help our bodies as a medicine. I start using the oils with my kids and pretty much my kid, my oils now that I use with my family. And um, my mother-in-law is a, a certified ar aromatherapist and she starts sharing with me also some blends that she was making for or my kids to help them when they get sick or to prevent them to getting sick. 
And little by little bit, I start uh, using more of the oils and learning all the uses that we can have with this uh, extracts from plants. So you started incorporating aromatherapy in your yoga classes because you were just trying to bring like a calmer environment for your students, right? What's yeah. the very first thing that you realized? Like, what was that aha moment in which you said, oh my God, this is working? I think it, it was when I bought the, the kit, the essential oil kit, but the one that it was certified pure and certified of uh, therapeutic grade. Because the one that I was using, I started with, you know, the, the cheapest on the market. I just wanted to try. When you try things, you don't know <laughs> what's the best. And when I went to a aromatherapy class and they give me this oil to smell, it was no comparison with the ones I had. And I learned that there's grades and therapeutic grade and that it is just so different than the other ones um, that you can get on the supermarkets or in, in food stores. Um, so uh, the aha moment, like it was when I started using it with, with my family. And for example, when my kids had a fever, um, I, I started using peppermint and the fever just went away like immediately. And I was like so surprised that I could have something in my house to help my kids uh, during uh, sickness. Um, you know, sometimes it's really hard to get a doctor's appointment. You call them and they said, if, you know, if it's not an emergency, uh, then they give you the appointment three days later and you don't know what to do with the, your kid when it has a fever. So it's nice to have something at home that it helps uh, with yourself, with your loved ones that you could use, that it's safe to use also, that it's natural, that it could help you so many ways because it, it also helps the not only the physical, but the emotional part. Why and how, Luisa? Why why are we affected by whatever is in the, in the in the oils? What's the what's the that chemistry in our brains that is helping us heal, not only physical but emotionally? Okay, so uh, the the oils work emotionally through the inhalation system. I mean, and, and the respiratory system. When you put an oil maybe in your hand, or even if you just open a bottle and smell it. We have a lot of uh, smell receptors in, a, in our nose. Our nose is the most primitive uh, of our senses. When we're born, this is the only sense that we have 100% already developed, fully developed. Like we can see clearly, we can hear clearly, but our nose, noses are extremely powerful. Like we can know who's, who's our mom as soon as we born just by the smell. We recognize our mothers by the smell. So the smell is the one of all of the senses that is more developed as soon as we're born. It, it also helps us to recognize when we're in danger. Uh, you smell that something is burning or um, that something is toxic, even like the food. You smell the food and before you try it, you, you by the smell, you can recognize if the food is good or is not. So uh, when a, a smell comes into our no noses, the small receptors take that signal and, and go straight to the brain system where we have our emotions in the limbic system. And in that part of the brain, it releases the chemicals like dopamine, serotonin, to make us feel better, to make us feel relaxed, to calm the nervous system. So in that way, aromatherapy is uh, a way of treating the emotional part because it's the aroma uh, and it, it's giving you the chemicals that you need in your brain to produce uh, serotonin or uh, the, good, the feeling good chemicals, the happy chemicals, and to um, uh, mm, fight the cortisol, which is the stress hormone that, you know, stress can affect everything. It can affect our mood. It can affect our body. We start getting sick uh, when we feel a lot of stress or 
even anxiety, it could give us, you know, physical symptoms. For example, I have been having this cold for probably o almost a week. I think it's been five days since I started feeling like this. What oil should I have used during this time? I'm almost done. I'm almost out of it. But if I have you closer and you see me the way I've been, oh. runny nose, sore throat, coughing, shortness of breath, what would you have given me? Given me? Yeah, I wish I was there to give you an oil right away. Well, there's, there's different oils. Um, because each oil has an array of unique properties, uses, and effects. But we all know that uh, you, you can make your own cough syrup with lemon drops on uh, honey and take it for throat discomfort. For congestion, you could use peppermint because peppermint it has a cooling effect and it could help you with the respira respiratory system. So I will give you peppermint and I will give you um, lemon oil. And that, that's a cool part of using a, a oil that it's pure and therapeutic is because you can take it internally. Because if you go to a market, not all the oils uh, are for internal use. The ones that I use are pure, 100% pure and therapeutic grade. And that's when you can take it internally and you can make your own cough syrups or you can uh, use it as a ch chest rub. You can put the oils on your chest to make a decongestion. Uh, or you can smell them. Another, well, the, there's different um, ways to use the oils. Another way is using with a diffuser. This is a diffuser. It's an ultrasonic device that doesn't change the chemistry of the oils. It doesn't burn them because it's, it's not hot. It's, it's cold. And you can put some drops in there, put them next to your bed. And the whole night you can be um, helping your, your congestion by putting the oils that will help to the respiratory system. Um, so there's three ways to use the oils. You can use them um, through inhalation. And like I said, it will go straight to your brain, releasing all the chemicals that your body needs. And that's when you want to work the emotional part or uh, when you want to decongest your nose. Another way to use them is topically. You can use the oils topically, and that's when you want to um, treat something on your skin, for example. If you cut or have a burn or insect bites, you can treat that with some oils that will help you heal the wounds or just calm the itchy, um, itchiness. Uh, you could use the oils also topically when you have muscle pain to treat... Uh, for example, arthritis. What will we use for muscle pain? Um, muscle pain, there's there's blends that have a lot of oils because when you use more, two or more oils, you can increase their powerful effect. So there's oils that are already mixed. So this one has uh, chamomile because there some of the oils, the properties are there anti-inflammatory and they'll help you with the muscle pain. Um, so this one has osmanthus. Is that pronounced well, osmanthus? Okay. <laughs> um, it's called Deep Blue and it helps with all the muscle pain. There's also uh, lavender that helps relax the muscles or uh, copaiba. Copaiba is a very good uh, oil to use during inflammation. Um, another way to use them is in a bathtub. You can put some oils in your bathtub and, and that way it will go through your pores of the skin and uh, can have a powerful effect when you have, for example, fibromyalgia that you suffer from pain constantly or arthritis or if you're um, an athlete and you want to relax your muscle after you know, your exercise, that's a good way to do it with some Epsom salts in a bathtub. Um, you just mentioned lavender, and I guess that for what I have heard, lavender is one of the most used essential oils, and I do understand that it also has a very interesting effect in, in our emotional field. What are the, uh, what's the, the properties of lavender oil? How can we use it? Lavender, it's a very good anti-inflammatory it's also analgesic, so it's good to kill pain. 
This is a very good oil when you have um, headaches or when you have stress, anxiety, when you have migraines. Uh, it's an antidepressive as well. Uh, it has a very calming effect on the nervous system. As soon as you smell lavender, it's a very calming um, oil that you could use. Uh, it's also very good for any skin problems. Like if you burn yourself, you could use lavender to help you with um, the skin. It's also good with acne, with psoriasis, with any skin problem. Very, very interesting. Luisa, you have been uh, in this holistic world for more than a decade now. You are teaching, you have your students, you are le leading them with this type of techniques. We are living in a world in which we are super stressed. World is demanding from us our time, our attention, and we're being bombarded by a lot of things that are not necessarily the best for our emotional health. Um, but we were talking earlier, you were telling me how how grateful you feel of the progress in your students and how their lives started to change when they go to your studio. So what what would you recommend? Because when we are facing this type of fears, this type of changes in life, we we'll go through so much, we tend to probably rely on alcohol. We tend to rely on pills just to silence what's within Let's go ahead and forget whatever changes are going through me and I'm just not going to pay attention to it. So I'm going to get super drunk or I'm going to go on drugs or whatever is suppressing the feelings that I can't deal with or that I don't want to deal with because it gets messy, right? When we start paying yeah. attention to what's within, it's going to be messy. Makeup is going <laughs> to run all over your face. <laughs> so what's, what's, what do you teach them? How is your philosophy in your school? I think the change comes inside of each of us. And if you said it's painful to look at it, it's messy and it is, but if you avoid looking inside of you, it will always be, and it will be reflected in every part of your life, in your relationships with people, in the way you treat yourself, in the way you eat, in the way you think, everything is gonna be affected, but by the way you are inside. And what's affecting us are thoughts, mainly our thoughts, because we are what we think. If we have a strong belief in something, then we're going to feel the way we think. And by the way we feel and the way we think is the way we're going to act. So everything comes with the mind. So I think the first thing is to start noticing and being aware of the way we think and questioning ourselves why we think the way we think. Why do I think that? Do I really believe on that? What can I do to change that belief that it will be a better belief, that it will make me grow as a person, that it will make my life easier if I just change that belief for something more positive? And when we, yeah. So when we change our minds in a positive way, it also releases the chemicals that it will go through our body. It's a good feeling um, sensation when you have positive thoughts, even being grateful. That's, that's very important. If you start uh, practicing gratitude every day, it will immediately start changing your day and everything is, around you is gonna be reflected on how grateful you are with your life and how grateful you are with your body and how do you treat your body? It's, it's a way to start loving yourself because you're grateful of all the power of your body and what you can do with it. And then you start treating your body better. You start you know, watching what you're eating and how you feed yourself and what is best for you. And then you start making those change habits. Like is this that I'm eating or drinking, you mentioned alcohol, is this is gonna be good for me? And just the fact you're being more aware, it makes you start having those changes in your life. And little by little bit, you're increasing that energy on you and that positivity. So we can definitely, by having a good uh, mental hygiene, 
mm-hmm. choosing our thoughts carefully, we can start molding ir- our reality, right? It's not going to be like morning to, like night to morning. It's going to take some no. time and habit of developing and trying again and trying again. But how can we actually take such good care of our thoughts if whatever is out there is bombarding us with the complete opposite? We live in a world in which we are constantly... Uh, sold the fact that you have to look a certain way, that you have to act a certain way, and that you have to own certain things to have mm-hmm. value. And that brings me to something you said earlier, and you said, find your worth, find or understand that you are worth it and that you should be giving yourself better treatment, like a higher quality lifestyle. When it comes not to owning or to, you know, the facade, but to to your habits, to your emotions, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's very important to have self out, um, self-esteem because that changed everything. And the way you think about yourself is the way you're going to treat yourself. But you said that takes time. That's not one day to the other. But if you notice, when you look at yourself at the mirror, what are you telling to yourself? Uh, oh, you know, or what are you thinking constantly? Am I going to be able to do this? If you're doubting yourself a lot, if you don't believe in yourself, if you don't like the way you look, if you're comparing yourself with others, those are things that are not for sure making you feel good. So if you detect, if you start being aware of how you think and how you make yourself feel by thinking that, then you might start shifting things and but that's not easy and sometimes you need to find something that will help you it could be a book it could be a movie it could be a yoga practice it could be the oils it could be it could, it could be even food you know that gives you energy changing habits uh, it could be running it's just finding something that makes you feel good and don't stop doing it self worth i'm still i'm still um stalked in the word <laughs> self worth because it's something that has been resonating with me lately we tend to think that we have great self esteem but if we reevaluate there are always areas that we can improve is we we don't love ourselves as much as we should um it, we are fa- we faced on a daily basis we face job We face having to, you know, comply with social activities, probably more than one job. And then when are we going to take care of ourselves? Is it, it's not easy to have a healthy diet. It's not easy to go out running. It's not easy to go do yoga. It takes time. You need to go ahead and give a, at least an hour of your time in which we may not have it. We may don't, maybe we just don't feel like it. But there's people like you, and you're going to teach me how to do it, <laughs> that you're a graphic designer. You have been practicing your aromatherapy, and you've been helping people with it for some time now. And you practice yoga, and you teach yoga. You have your studio, and mm-hmm. you have three children. <laughs> and you are homeschooling your children. So yeah. now what I want you is to help me figure out I, I also have a very busy life. I have a lot on my plate. If I wanted to incorporate a moment of, of a, a me moment within mm-hmm. my day, I'm going to incorporate yoga. Let's say 15 mm-hmm. minutes. Let's say 10. Mm-hmm. What would you do? Mm-hmm. If there was an exercise of a, or a routine that's not going to take too long, but it's going to give me the sense of, okay, I took care of a tiny bit of myself at least. Mm-hmm. Well, like what poses or what? Yes, it could be an exercise, poses, or a practice, maybe a meditation, something. Okay. Because I'm trying to, at a certain point, be able to do what you do. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, you're right. We we have a very busy life. Everybody's busy now. We're always running. We always have to get somewhere. We are bombarded by our phones and who's texting me and what do they want from me? I have to respond to this. But the time doesn't come itself. You have to create it. You have to create the time for yourself. Like you said, I'm a mother of three. I'm homeschooling. I have three. And I'm 
time for myself because it's very important to have that time for you. How can you do it? Take a good bath or a shower with candles, with sands, with something that it will take care of you, like something that will make you feel good, like a nice hot shower, like uh, if you are waiting for one of your kids at class, take a book with you, take a moment for yourself to read it. Or <clears throat> now there's a lot of information like Nindalia, like podcast, you know, you, when you're cooking, when you're washing dishes, put the, put the phone and, and, and hear something that it will make you feel good, that it will change your mindset. Uh, it's always about creating the time and not having the excuse of, I don't, I don't have the time. You're never going to have it. You have to make it. It's about sometimes waking up, waking up earlier than in, uh, your kids or whatever activities you have and just make a five minute, 10 minute to be grateful for being awake, for being here, We're grateful for your body to, you know, maintaining you alive for breathing, uh, maybe a five minute walk uh, is just always trying to find that connection with yourself that it will make your life much better. But it's about creating that time, creating that space every day. You keep choosing the right words. Luisa, <laughs> you keep saying the words that I'm going to be hanging from for the next 10 minutes. You said choose, choose to do it. You choose what you're going to be eating. You choose what you're going to be listening to. And I'm going to have to take back the words that I just said. I said that we're bombarded by information that is not good for us. But hey, what are you choosing? Exactly what you yeah. just said. You can go in your car and you can choose from putting the radio in which the material that you're going to be listening to, not only you, but your children, it's mm -hmm. far from uh, educational, far from constructive. And you just go ahead and put a podcast. Go ahead mm -hmm. and put an audiobook. Go ahead mm -hmm. and put one of the many, many things that are online that are teaching you, that are giving you information that is actually valuable. So mm -hmm. choose. How choose. long? Choose right. I, yeah, choose right. It's your, <laughs> yeah. it's your choice. Probably, yeah. yes. The valuable information, it's considerably lower than, than the garbage that is out there. But that is exactly where it comes the our part in which, okay, what am I going to decide? Am I going to just run with the sheep? <laughs> or are you going <laughs> to go the other way and you're going to choose, okay, I decide not to run that direction and I decide that I'm going to nurture myself into the person that I want to be, right? Yes. Um, you said it right. It's about choosing. I went to a concert and I was in, in line to go to the bathroom and I was going to take my phone out you know whenever you have a free time now what will we do we take the phones and we start ah. and then we start like you said bombarding ourselves with all this information and sometimes we're comparing ourselves or oh she has this she went on vacation and you start uh, doing a lot of things except being with you and I noticed all the girls that were in line to go to the bathroom were in their phones and I was like you know what I'm just going to take a minute for myself And you can find those minutes everywhere. I mean, I was, you know, in a concert full of people, loud, but I just find a moment to breathe and realize I'm alive, I'm here, this moment, I'm present, and I'm enjoying myself. Because we have this life only to enjoy yourself. And our bodies are going to be with us from the beginning to the end. And you, we have to appreciate what our bodies do. It's, it's our vehicle for our souls. And we need to take care of that because that's the only body that you're going to have to describe. Exactly. Until, until the next one. <laughs> and also probably <laughs> yes. choosing if we are going to inevitably going to go to social media, why don't you choose better? Who are you following? And what's the material being distributed by the people that you follow? It happened to me. I'm going to get a little bit personal here, but I found myself, um, criticizing someone from my past okay and i was like eh, 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 look at this look at this. and I, i you know in a certain moment i said what am i doing why do i keep seeing their pictures if all i'm doing is criticizing that's their life they have the right of living whatever they want to live so i started unfollowing 
What am I doing every time I see myself criticizing someone I unfollow? I don't need to see you. God bless you. I hope you have a great life. But if your feed is going to causing me something that I'm not that, that I want, I'm trying to avoid. It's not that I'm going to be a perfect person or anything. I'm still, like we were talking earlier, I'm still going to have my flaws. Who, who mm-hmm. doesn't have flaws? But mm-hmm. surround yourself by an, an environment that is healthy, that is balanced, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, two things in that. I have my personal Instagram, which is me and my friends and family and people I know. And I have uh, the Aroma uh, Instagram and I have the uh, yoga Instagram. But in those Instagrams, I only follow people that inspire me. And I also have the graphic design, like people that are very creative. So when I go to Instagram, I choose to go to my businesses and look for people that inspire me, like either a very um, inspiring yoga teacher or someone, somebody that is always sharing nice thoughts um, that I can share also in my classes, or I go for um, how can I use my oils um, in my house, or I go and see people that inspire me. So when I go to Instagram or, or social media in that sense, I always get inspired instead of judging and criticizing. That happens too, but that's on my personal um, thing. And then when that happens, you have to look at yourself. Why do I feel this way? Because everything, it's, it's a mirror. What you see in other people, what causes you um, that feeling, it tells something about yourself. And, and in that way, always, you know, why, instead of maybe unfollow, that that's good because it, it's not creating a good environment for you. But also, why am I feeling this way? It, it, I, do I need to accomplish something? Do I need to be more, um, you know, secure about what I do? Or it, it, it's it's always something about ourselves. So in so that I, way, we I, have to. Look. Mm-hmm. I completely agree with you. What what are they showing us that we don't like to see? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I really but, like what you say about inspiration. Like, let's just follow people that are inspiring. Yeah. yeah. And how? Why? Why couldn't we also? You know, if, if we go a little bit deeper, why couldn't we also find a way to be inspired by the people that we don't like? Find the, the golden nugget in, in, you know, in the, in the cave. Why? I'm pretty sure that everyone in their lives have something okay. that they can be proud of and that we could take as a, as a lesson to enrich mm-hmm. our, our own experience, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, it, it can show you something that you don't want to do or that you want to do or something that you want to be or something that you want to be. But even that you learn, like, I don't want to be like that person. But then it makes you be or try to be a better person by knowing what you want and what you don't. And just find people who inspire you and try to find something good about, uh, you know, the people that you don't like that much. Do you, do you um, combine your lifestyle, your knowledge with a specific um, diet? Let's not say diet as a restriction, but uh, food habits. How do you balance what you do? Especially, again, in which you're running your house, you're educating your children. There's so few time for, for getting <laughs> exclusive when it comes to what you bring to your table. Yeah. Uh, like you said, we're busy and sometimes it's very hard combining with the homeschool and all the things I do to also, uh, you know, spend time in the kitchen. But I always notice that I always have the, the choice. For example, I love my coffee in the morning. And that was the first thing I do as soon as I wake up. But I started changing that for something that it's going to benefit me more as soon as I wake up. And that's a, um, a glass of water with a drop of lemon oil and we know that you could squeeze a lemon on your water it re- it's very recommended when you wake up because it alkalinizes your body it detox your body so instead of running for the coffee even though I'm, i i really wanted it i always choose water with lemon and then i boil the water for my coffee and then i can have it later but um, it's about choosing. And then I notice, like, 
you know, I tried to be in a diet and you could choose a piece of bread or you could choose, you know, about choosing and I don't follow a specific diet right now, but it, I, every time that I'm looking for food, I'm trying to choose what's going to be the best for me. And it, it's about choosing. <laughs> you are saying the, the word again, and I love it. It's about choosing. It's about choosing who I want to be, how I want to be. And one day at a time, come on, self-compassion and self-care. Like we don't need to be the perfect person. Uh, at once we can do one day at a time one step at a time I, I i have read many times i don't know who said it some someone important i can't bring the name to my brain right now but it's like you don't need to to go the whole uh stairs at once you just focus on the first step and when you're there you'll focus on the next one that's probably the way of doing it, right? How do you teach your students self-compassion and patience? Because probably we go, I've done it many times, I go to one class and I am so beaten up after I finish that I'm like, oh, I'm not sure if I'm gonna do this again because I don't, <laughs> it's just like, uh, is this for me or no? How do you teach them perseverance? And again, what you said earlier, like, do you consider yourself deserving of a nice, healthy body, or you're okay with whatever you have? Um, how do I teach? Well, I, I always tell them to listen to their bodies and don't go farther than the limits that they can go through because sometimes you push yourself too hard, even in a yoga pose or in your daily life, you push yourself and then you get, ah, it's overwhelming. Like you said, I, I don't know if I'm gonna go back because you pushed you too hard. You have to recognize your limits and you have to work with, with them. And I show them what they can do step by step. And I said, if you, if you feel comfortable, then go to the next step. If you feel comfortable, if you feel you can do more, then do it. And then I show them, you know, what I'm able to do maybe after a year of practice. And I said, if you practice and listen to your body, you, you're going to be able to get there. But everything in, in life, take practice, everything, everything. Uh, so yoga teaches a lot of that, of being patient with your body and work towards a certain goal or a certain pose to be reflected in your life. In your life, you have to work every day for your goal, the ultimate goal. We are reaching the end of our conversation, Luisa. Mm -hmm. um, If, is there something that we're going to be closing for now? Okay. <laughs> is there something that if you could tell everybody that you feel that has changed the way you see life and that you kind of feel that if people knew they, they would have a better life. It doesn't matter if someone has said it before. It doesn't matter if it's been said a hundred thousand times. But if there is something that you could leave people with, what would it be? Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> Drum roll for Luisa. <laughs> pursue happiness your own happiness is gonna take you to the best places it's gonna take you to see the the beauty on everything on yourself even in the people you have hard hard time accepting just pursue the happiness do whatever makes you feel uh hug people love people be compassionate um recognize who you are recognize that you're love, that you're a light, that you can shine in this life and just look for that. Uh, you have to look your past. You have to look where you're coming from and accept that. Because if you don't accept your past, then you're in conflict with yourself. And living with conflict, it's not going to make you happy. So you need to embrace who you are, what has been part of your life, your experiences, Every person that have come around you, even those some person, some people have left you in the road or have hurt you, but they change something on you and you could learn from that. And then you can thank them for being part of, you know, this life. Everybody's like an actor in our lives and we create our lives. We choose, we choose what we think, we choose what we Uh, eat we choose every moment we choose what job we want to be we choose we choose we choose even when you think you're not able to choose 
yes, you are. You can quit that job that is not making you happy. You can uh, put those chips away or stop smoking or uh, you could stop things. And you, it's about choosing and choosing right what, what's good for you and what's going to make you happy and what's going to best make the best of this life. Well, thank you for choosing to accept our invitation to Mindalia live streaming today, Luisa. We are truly grateful that you joined us and that you shared this time with us. Thank you for allowing us for being a channel to your ideas. Before we leave, of course, we just want to say to the people seeing that Mindalia.com is an international nonprofit organization. You can collaborate with us just by liking this channel, subscribing, liking the video, of course, passing this information to someone that you think that may like what we've been talking about here today. Nothing else to say for now. Just thank you again. And until next time, hope you have a great day.